Hello everyone. I wanted to go through just a quick tutorial on setting up a subdomain, um, particularly if you uh, use Google domains as your host provider. I, I wanted to set one up and I had trouble finding all the pieces to help me get this done in a single place. So uh, I kind of found out on my own kind of how to do this, but uh, so I'm going to go through that with you here. But a subdomain, the reason you'd want to set something like that up in there is it's just kind of a way to set up multiple websites within a single domain registration. So you don't have to pay the $12 or whatever it is with uh, your hosting provider for individual domains in there. You can have multiple websites completely separate within that single domain. An example would be like, you know, if you had a company, you know, mycompany.com and uh, you had a widget you wanted to sell, you could set up a subdomain that would be widget.mycompany.com and uh, it would just be for that product. You'd set up an entire different website for it and everything like that. Uh, the good thing about search engines kind of use subdomains as individual websites. So it does create possibilities of just overall increased traffic to your site. So it's something to consider uh, if that's the route you want to take. So I'm going to go through this tutorial with you uh, and, and hopefully you, you see the value in it. All right, so what I've got here, uh, I just created a J&J Enterprises um, website in, in Google Domains. So if I go over to Google Domains, um, this is the information for it. Now, the Google search will say, you know, if you want to add a subdomain, you would come down here into custom records, uh, type in your subdomain and make sure you get the data right. And, uh, and make sure you get the type right and all that. So if you're not comfortable doing this, uh, let me show you kind of an easier uh, way that it's more automatic to do it. And what I will do instead of playing with DNS records, I'll come over here, click on website. And you can see this is my homepage right now for the main jnjenterprises.org website. I'm gonna come over here and click on build another website. I'm going to just simply choose a simple site and I've got two options right here. I can use an existing site or start a new site. I don't want to use existing site because that's my uh, main jnjenterprises.org domain. So I'll just click on start new site. It's going to pop up and ask me for a name. Okay, so what do I want to name this subdomain? Let's just call it widget. And I'll click on try again. It's going to just work its way through. And boom, up here at the top, I've got widget.jnj enterprises. It takes me right to a web page development. So I'll just type in widget right here. Don't type it. it's whatever you want to do. And I would hit publish. And what's going to come up here, it's going to say publish to the web. This web address right here is just within the Google Sites area. So in other words, you can't have a web page in Google Sites that is the same as anybody else. So I could come out here and I can name this really anything I want to. And I'll just shorten it to where it's widget.jnj. All right, so it does not affect the URL that you would type in a web browser. That's going to be widget.jnjenterprises.org. That will stay the same. So this is just for me uh, within the Google website. So I'll just type that and I'll click on publish. Your site has been published successfully. All right, so now if I come back over to Google domains and look in the DNS records, I'll come down here, scroll down, and you'll see now an addition has been made right here, serving on widget.jnj enterprises. I expand that, and here's that C name or canonical name that has been created for me. I didn't have to go in here and type that and make sure I got everything right. It was done automatically when I created that website. So uh, the canonical name, that simply just means it's a pointer pointing it to the, the domain host so they know where to find it in the records. So widget noon. This time to live means it'll take about an hour for it to show up. So if I typed in the browser right now for widget uh, J&J Enterprises, 
I'm going to get that. It hadn't found it yet because it hasn't been cycled through. It's going to take about an hour. That's what that PTL means. Now, if you did it manually, you could set this to be 10 minutes, an hour, or six hours. By default, it set six hours or 3,600 minutes. But that was just, it's a lot simpler. You don't have to worry about getting all this right if you just create the website and let the website do the work for you. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, certainly leave me a comment and let me know if it, if it has cleared up any mystery. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks.